triple leveraged ETFs. These bad boys have the potential to turn an investment of $100 into more than $120 thousand dollars on the 40 year time frame that while normal index fund investing would have turned that 100 dollars into only a little more than four thousand dollars on that same 40 year time frame in this video i'll tell you everything you need to know about triple leveraged sp 400 etfs hey fellow investors how are you doing my name is stein and welcome to my youtube channel now let's get into it so what is a leverage etf anyways well first we need to understand the basics and the basics are normal etfs an etf is an exchange traded fund this is basically a fund which reflects an index sector commodity or any other asset meaning that generally if the underlying index or commodity goes up so does the etf if the underlying goes down so does the etf a great example of an etf is the spy which is an etf which tracks the s p 500 and the s p 500 is of course the most well-known index ever it consists out of 500 large companies listed on american stock exchanges hopefully you understand what i just said and if you don't that is completely fine too just press j a couple of times on your keyboard to rewatch this part but do make sure you understand the basics because you need to understand what an etf is to understand what a triple leverage etf does so i will now assume you understand etfs and then a triple leverage etf is very simple to understand most leverage etfs are either two or three times leveraged it doesn't really matter but what does matter is that it is daily leveraged say the sp 400 goes up one percent in a given day a two times leverage etf would then go twice that so two percent and a triple leverage etf would go three times as much so three percent in a given day let's say the sp 400 goes down 10 percent instead well the two times leverage etf would go down twice that so 20 percent and a triple leverage etf would go down three times as much so minus 30 percent again hopefully you understand the logic behind that but remember a leveraged etf is leveraged daily meaning it is reset daily to best reflect the required return as an example let's say a given triple leverage etf has 100 million dollars under management so the fund will change the exposure it has to the sp 500 on a daily basis if that triple leverage etf indeed has 100 million dollars under management it wants to have three times as much exposure so 300 million dollars of exposure to the s p 500 the funds will then buy or sell their holdings on a daily basis to best reflect the 3x exposure to hammer the point home for the last time the leverage is adjusted daily this means that if the sp 400 goes up 10 percent in a year there is no guarantee that a triple leverage etf would go up 30 percent in that same year the only thing we can assume is that a triple leverage etf will go up or down three times as much as a normal etf on a given day long-term leverage etf returns vary wildly compared to normal index returns however the potential of leverage etf is still second to none and leverage etfs exist for a lot of commodities and even indexes but the topic of this video is the s p 500 let's talk about the potential of a three times leveraged s p 500 etf according to google leverage etfs were only first introduced in the year 2006 but no worries i've done a lot of due diligence for you guys for this video i have created historical s p 500 triple leverage etf data all the way back to 1940. to do this i've downloaded all the s p 500 price data from 1940 until the 11th of november of 2021. then i calculated the daily return of the s p 500 for this time frame and then i calculated how well a triple leverage etf would have fared during this time period these are my findings so if you had invested 100 dollars into the normal s p 500 in the 1940s it would turn into a whopping 36,811 dollars just 81 years later so in this chart the blue line shown here is the return of the s p 500 and the orange line well that is what would have happened if you had bought into a triple leveraged s p 500 etf all the way back in 1940. you wouldn't have 36,000 dollars today no you would have about 10 million dollars today 100 dollars into 10 million dollars over the course of one lifetime truly insane and that is why i am so hyped about triple leveraged etfs they have the potential to turn insignificant sums of money into truly insane figures given the time so for this part of the video i have looked at what would have happened if you had put 100 dollars into the sp 500 compared to 100 dollars into a triple leveraged sp 500 etf for the first trading day of every decade starting in 1940. so again for 1940 you'd have gotten roughly 37 thousand dollars into the normal 
S&P 500 and roughly 10 million dollars into the triple leverage fund. 1950s 28k for the normal fund and 9.1 million dollars for the triple leveraged fund. 1960s roughly 8k for the normal fund and 360 thousand dollars for the triple leverage fund. 1970s roughly 5k in the normal fund and 106 thousand dollars into the triple leveraged fund. And this is an important one. 4.3k in the normal fund versus 126k in a triple leveraged fund. I find this one important since January 1980 is roughly 41 years ago. A lot of the young people watching this video are probably roughly 40 years away from retirement. Therefore it is awesome to see that a really small amount of money can still generate insane returns given the time. 1990s 1.3k versus 9k in a triple leveraged fund. And again an important time frame. This is the only time frame we will be looking at where the triple leveraged fund didn't beat the normal S&P 500. Of course the year is 2000. Mainly because of the internet bubble your return in a triple leveraged fund would have only been $250. While of course the normal S&P 500 reigned supreme at $320. So yeah this time frame shows us that it's indeed possible to lag behind normal S&P 500. So why did this happen? Well, I will tell you why this happened and how you can partly mitigate this risk in just a bit, so do make sure to stick around. Lastly, $100 in 2010 would have turned into $410 in the normal S&P 500 while returning $2.3,000 in a triple leverage fund. So we found that in almost all time periods, a triple leverage fund performs way better than a normal S&P 500 ETF does. So much so that investing only a small amount of money let's say $1,000 in 1980 gives you the potential to double your retirement funds. A lot of people retire with roughly $1 million to the name or even less in a lot of cases. But if you had invested $1,000 in the 1980s into a triple leveraged S&P 500 ETF, you would have roughly $1.3 million extra today. That is in addition to your normal retirement funds. I think this is truly extraordinary. And that is exactly why I find triple leverage ETFs so interesting. They have the potential to turn insignificant amounts of money into very significant funds. But as seen by the 2000 example, they are risky. For those interested, these are all the compounded average growth rates I've calculated for every time frame. Pause the video if you want to analyze them for yourself. Additionally about these results, I did not include the cost associated with the ETFs. Generally, normal S&P 400 ETFs have very low cost structures. That is what triple leverage ETFs can have significantly higher cost structures. For example, the triple leverage S&P 400 ETF I personally invest in has a management fee of 0.75% on a yearly basis. Also, do keep in mind that past performance is not a guarantee for future returns. Now, let's talk about the risks. I think there are three main long-term, and I mean long-term, risks associated with triple leveraged ETFs. This is extremely important to understand before you start investing, so please bear with me. The first risky bad boy is volatility drag. This sounds really complicated, but it truly isn't, so pay close attention. This is basically the result of quick math and as easy as shown in an example. So the normal fund starts at $100. It goes down 3% for three consecutive days all the way down to $19.1. But then it recovers with a whopping 9% return on the final day to end up basically where we started at $100. And the triple leveraged ETF will go through the same days but it has to triple the returns. And it doesn't end up at $100, no it ends up at $96 instead. And that is because of volatility track. So basically if the S&P 500 trades sideways or downwards for a long as time, you get hurt badly in a triple leveraged ETF. This is also what happened in the 2000s, where the S&P 500 took a long as time to recover from the internet bubble. And as a consequence, triple leveraged ETFs suffered big time. Although if the market goes up, like it tends to do on long time periods, volatility drag is almost a non-issue. And there is a way to deal with this issue for the most part. We'll talk about that mitigation in just a bit, but first, if the S&P 500 were to cut down more than 33% in one given day, you lose everything. I am not 
kidding. Minus 34% times 3 equals minus 100%. If this were to happen, the fund would cease to exist forever. And triple leverage ETFs do die from time to time. But there has never been an S&P 500 triple leverage ETF which has ceased to exist. Why? Because there was never a day close to going down more than 33%. The biggest daily drawdowns I found in my data from the 1940s to today are these. Topping the chart with a whopping minus 20% in one day in 1987 which don't get me wrong would have sucked big time in a triple leveraged etf but it wouldn't have killed the fund so this is the main reason why i would never put significant amount of money into a triple leveraged etf there just isn't anything we can do to mitigate this risk so do keep in mind i'm only advocating allocating a small insignificant amount of money to a triple leveraged etf my last long-term risk of a triple leverage ETF is dividends. Since we aren't getting those sweet passive income diffies with triple leverage ETFs. So yeah, that is a risk. If the future returns of the SP 500 become more dividend heavy in the future, we will be missing out on a lot of the gains. So again, be aware that you do not get any dividends when investing in triple leverage SP 500 ETFs. By the way, some of you might ask, but I do not see leverage as an inherent risk. Since well, that is the opportunity we are abusing. Nobody should ever trade leverage ETFs with significant amounts of money anyways. So I just told you that I believe there's a way to partly mitigate volatility track. So let me now tell you how. This way is called dollar cost averaging. By now, you probably have heard this term hundreds of times already, so let's just do a quick refresher. Dollar cost averaging is where you build up a position over time, slowly adding a bit of money each time you invest. And the idea is the further you spread out your investments, the more average your entry point becomes. Dollar cost averaging can be done by investing weekly, monthly, quarterly, or even yearly. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you invest as much and as often as you would like, over time. My data shows that you would get amazing returns if you dollar cost average into an S&P 500 triple leveraged ETF. In the following experiments, we are investing $100 on the first trading day of every single month for the following time frame, starting with January 1980. This is where dollar cost averaging $100 into the S&P 500 every single month would get your funds up to $507,000 today, which would be a gross profit of $457,000 excluding fees, taxes, etc. If you had invested $100 every single month into a triple leverage ETF instead, that would have turned into a mind-boggling $6.6 .6 million today. So that is about $6.5 million of gross profit excluding fees, taxes, etc. If you had started in the 1990s, the normal S&P 400 DCA would get you to $187,000. The triple leverage DCA would have compounded to $814,000. So a $776,000 profit. And this one is important. If you had started DCAing into the SP 400 in the year 2000, you would get your funds up to $82,000. So that would be a profit of $56,000, which certainly isn't bad. DCAing your funds into a triple leverage ETF would get your funds up to $371,000. So generating a staggering $245,000 of profits. Remember folks, this is the time frame where a one-time investment into a triple leverage ETF would have lost out to a normal S&P 500 ETF. So it seems that by dollar cost averaging, you can mitigate a lot of the risks. So in this case, if you had started investing into a triple leverage ETF in January 2000, you would have gotten a return of almost 1000% to your total contributions. A 10x return by dollar cost averaging. And of course, 2010, where you would have gotten a profit of 20000 dollars in a normal fund and one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars of profits in a triple leveraged etf so by now i've hopefully conveyed to you why a triple leveraged s p 400 etf can be a great hold for the long term however do keep in mind that these bad boys are still extremely risky if the s p 400 ever went down 34 percent or more in one given day everything is gone. And even if that doesn't happen, leverage can slow you down on the long term. If the market traded sideways for longer than we've historically seen thus far, well, your triple leverage ETF wouldn't do so well in that 
case. I am personally applying the DCA strategy on a triple leveraged S&P 500 ETF with an almost insignificant amount of money compared to my portfolio. Just like we discussed in this video. Like we've seen earlier, I'm personally buying the Wisdom Tree S&P 500 3 times daily leveraged ETF through one of my brokers trading to 12. This broker allows me to buy 0.001 share at a time of this ETF without paying any commissions. For this strategy, no commissions is a must. Management fees are already way higher for triple leveraged ETFs. So you need to make sure that if you apply the strategy that you mitigate all the costs that you possibly can. Also, if you apply this strategy, do make sure that you research the specific ETF in depth. Google the name of the fund, try to understand how the fund gets 3x exposure and learn what the cost structure is, etc. Also, please make sure it's a daily long ETF and make sure it's not a short ETF. Those do exist too and those are not a great hold for the long term. This strategy certainly isn't for everyone and that is completely fine. Through all the research I've done on this, I know for a fact that just investing a small amount of money every single month into a triple leverage S&P 500 ETF can have the potential to outperform your portfolio significantly. But you would also need to have the conviction to keep buying in even when the market is crashing. And I guarantee you that when the market crashes, you'll see all your gains vaporize. For example, there was a time period after the dot-com crash where you would be down almost 99%. Do think this through. Do you have the conviction to keep buying and keep holding the ETF? Also, would you be okay with losing everything if the S&P 500 ever crashed more than 33% in one day? If you aren't okay with that, that is fine. Maybe invest even less money. Or just stay away from leverage ETFs altogether and focus on normal index fund investing for now. You can still get phenomenal returns by investing in the normal S&P 500. And I believe that's about all I've got for you today. Please let me know by commenting if there are any questions you would like me to research with this data set. I would love to further answer your specific triple leverage ETF questions. Now, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like and maybe even subscribe. Comment down below what you want me to talk about next. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.